In my opinion, the best photography trips come when traveling with other photographers. Back in May of last year, I hijacked a family road trip to Utah and we had such a good time that I ended up getting adopted into the Lazo family. That's right, adopted son status, baby. Ever since then, we had taken many family photography trips, mostly inter-island to Maui, Kauai, and most recently to the Big Island. This trip was hyped since it would be the first Milky Way trip of the new season. We had a variety of ideas and plans, including returning to Lake Waiau to capture a snowy landscape, as well as photograph the stars while Kilauea rumbled beneath our feet. But little did I know that this trip would be one of the worst group trips ever, at least for photography. But throughout the trials and tribulations, I learned one valuable lesson about quality versus quantity. This trip's mishaps began long before the start of our trip. We received a text message from Jay that not only was there no snow on Mauna Kea, but the summit was also closed due to high winds. So our plans to hike to the lake went out the window. As this was all being discussed in the group chat, I was stuck on the toilet at home, battling food poisoning. After barely eating for a few days, I somehow mustered up the strength and a small appetite a few hours before heading to the airport. Dinner of champions while we wait for three hours. It also didn't help that we missed out on a beautiful sunset while waiting for our delayed flight. But with hope still high, we began our trip Friday night as we flew into Hilo on a very rainy night. I was eager to still get out and shoot despite the bad weather, but the rest of the group wanted to sleep in after a full day of work on their part. Reasonable, but I had to rev my photography engine and wait until the following day to begin shooting. After a quick breakfast at Ken's and a near disaster afterwards as my nausea kicked in, we finally headed out on our first shoot of the trip. Woo. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Big Island. We are out here with the crew, hiking to this waterfall here. It's our second day here for first, first day. Uh, we spent the first night just kind of chilling and sleeping in, resting up because the weather wasn't looking so good. But we're out here in this waterfall. We'll see if we can get there. How's Garrett's new Shimoda bag? Looking good in the women's color. to these falls. The issue that we're having is that there's no foreground water flow that we can use as foreground to take our shots. So what I think I'm going to try and do is I noticed that there were some nice little yellow flowers back here. I think I'm going to try and use that as foreground and see if that will work for our shot. I tried a variety of compositions but was unable to find anything good. It can be challenging to photograph waterfalls without any interesting foreground to anchor your composition. After our failed waterfall adventure, we headed to Kona. You already know that we had to make a pit stop at Pine Tree Cafe before hitting up the drains for sunset. Back at the drains. All right, everybody, we are back here at the Kona Drains, uh, just exploring the coastline a little bit, shooting sunsets. Now, this location might be a little familiar looking because this is actually the first place that we tried to shoot the Kona Drains ever on the vlog. And it's the first place that we went to actually meet up with Darwin. That was on our first trip back like November 2021. Now, at the time I came here and visited this drain with Mouse and Ed and the water flows were negligible next to none 
at that time, the water flow was nowhere near as high as it is. Right now, there's a nice uh, westerly, northwest swell. Um, so we're getting a pretty good amount of water flow coming directly towards us and maybe even a little too much water flow. But we're gonna try and shoot this well instead for sunset because this might be our only opportunity to photograph this well uh, because most of the time the water flow is pretty weak. But yeah, we're just gonna wait out the conditions, just try to see how we're gonna approach this and how to approach it safely. But hoping, hopefully it'd be a pretty good sunset. We've got a good amount of cloud cover too, so hopefully some light comes through and uh, gives us some good mood for our shots. I like to see what's on the top. <laughs> I like to see what's on the top. So Darwin rarely ever goes crazy for something like this, but his eye was caught by all of these waves crashing over here. So he said, we're gonna try and get two shots today. We're gonna get one shot this way and then go head back there when the sunset looks better. But yeah, as you can see, the waves just full on, just cascade down this pile of rocks, which is pretty unique for this spot because usually the waves, again, are not this big. Careful now. Oh man. Risk them for the biscuit. Risk it for the biscuit. I think I'm actually gonna come a little bit more on this side and kind of shoot at an angle. Woo! Oh, that was a good one. You got the first cascade that initially comes through the wall, and then you've got another cascade right here below. So that's what I'm trying to capture. Here comes a big one coming through the wall. Woo! Oh man, this is nice. Watch out for Darwin and Garrett. <laughs> at the well, but this is a great start to this sunset here. Unbelievable how a change in tides and a change in swell can really change a landscape. After grabbing some decent shots at the wall of water, we walked over to the well to shoot the rest of the sunset. All right, so I'm going to try and get the shot into the sun because I'm not sure how long this good light will last. But that way, if we get the tripod tall, we can at least kind of shoot down into the drain. And yeah, there are some big waves crashing here earlier, but we've both decided that if there is a big wave that were to come, we just got to cover up our camera gear <laughs> and hope for those smaller ones. Aye, uh, let's take a step back here. Let this, let this big wave. Woo! So it's like set up your, your tripod to Take your shots on the smaller ways and run away if there's a big one. I'm just gonna rely on Darwin running away as my cue to run away. Cause I'm just gonna be looking through my camera and not thinking about it. But yeah, these small ones are nice. <laughs> oh, I could have stayed. Oh, I could have stayed. <laughs> Are we toughing this one out or running away? Ooh! 
as the airplane goes by. As the airplane goes by. Because I low key, I, oh f that wave looks big. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, we're getting out of here. <laughs> Whoa. I think we should, we should have been okay. Oh, that one is good. All right, all right, we're out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we would have got toast on that one. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I just barely dodged that one. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, you know what? If this, if this isn't a testament to how good the FLM tripods are, I don't know what is. Ah, well, I had a good run. Finally got me. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, there's a sun star. Ah, oh, that would have been good. That would have been good. There's a sun star happening right now. We're all rushing to get the shot here. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we pull it off? Ah, oh, there it is. I think I got it. <laughs> All right, that was a big set that just came in. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm pretty much done shooting into the sun, but there's a little bit of light coming off the side, so we're gonna try and get a sideways, side angle like shot. Like yeah, the, yeah, the orange glow on the side. Oh. Ah, I just walked into that one. Okay, I'm good. This sunset sure was fun. The light was pretty decent and we had a blast trying to run away from all the big waves. After a foggy drive home, we hit the hay after a full day of activities. I was surprised that we were all able to wake up at 1 a.m. to make the drive out to photograph the Milky Way. Everybody's freaking done at 1 a.m. Everybody's done with Spencer. Yep, everybody is done with Spencer. to another day here on the Big Island. We are out here today it's about 3 a.m. just waiting to shoot some Milky Way. We've got this lone tree that's out here. I'm just gonna set up a quick time lapse, but the Milky Way is supposed to be rising just off to the left and then rising above the tree. So I'm gonna try and see if we can get a good time lapse and then we'll also get some track frames for that time lapse as well with a one. Yeah, the weather is looking absolutely great super good right now we've got totally clear skies facing milky way we've got light winds up here on the mountain 
shout out to Uncle G for driving us all around and getting us access to this area where we can uh, shoot these trees because these trees are freaking awesome. Hopefully we can get a variety of different type of shots here today. I ended up setting up the tracker to take a track shot of the Milky Way, then running over a few feet to find a foreground composition. I would then take a few foreground shots to blend in with the tracked Milky Way sky. Looks like the Death Star, yeah? The tractor beam. First attempt at the track shot, we got 30 more seconds, but I think you can already tell that it's going to be really good. Right now the Milky Way is a little bit low on the horizon, but all I need it to do is fully come up above the horizon and then we'll be perfect, perfect. that pretty much besides the occasional fog that rolls in there's no low clouds coming in and blocking our Milky Way so we can really track for that full two minutes and not have to worry about clouds rolling by so you don't have that issue. There was a moment where the fog was just thin enough to allow the stars to shine through. I managed to sneak in one single exposure to capture this magical moment. So I'm in the back of Jay's truck bed, the famous Jay Taco truck, but we are out here headed up a little bit further that we're going to target these trees over here next, I think. Maybe some more up there too, but yeah, this stuff is nice up here, these trees. Everybody is saying the same thing now because the Milky Way is much higher now. We like everybody wants to go get another shot at the Lone Tree, so we're gonna head back to the Lone Tree, get some more pictures. Hopefully, get something a little bit better than what we got. I mean, what we got over there wasn't bad, maybe just different, you know. So, yeah, let's get over there, see what we can get. Yeah, <laughs> Milky Way session. Still visible, so I think I'm just gonna let the time lapse run out, but the sun is starting to rise a little bit. I think we're gonna drive a little bit further up to try and see if we can shoot some fog with the trees when the sun comes up. But yeah, very, very productive 
Milky Way session here on this trip. We ended up skipping out on sunrise because the fog was getting too thick, but this morning's Milky Way shoot couldn't have gone any better. We took a daytime nap, then headed back to the drains for sunset. After scouting for a bit, we decided on one drain, but as sunset approached, the clouds ended up running away. I was the only one willing to risk my camera to take some of these clear sky drain shots. Alright, I guess it's better now or never. There's like zero cloud cover. So I'm just going to take one sun star shot just here at the end. Drain, 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 sunset. The water flows are actually pretty good. The water when the water flow drops, it's actually going down pretty far. So I want to take advantage of that. But unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of sky available to us today. So it's just going to be a simple sun star shot with nice golden light. Oh yeah, that one was nice. that I want, still wanted to shoot this stuff here, even though the weather is junk. It's just kind of show you guys that even if you don't have any clouds, you can still take some decent shots that, you know, as long as there's a little bit of light, as long as you kind of work the scene a little bit, or at least know what you want to shoot, you can uh, definitely pull off a shot that's deserving of shooting and just have a good time doing it. But. The reason why you're far away from the drains right now is because I don't want to risk losing a vlog camera. I'd rather just pay attention with one camera. It makes it makes the job easier. But yeah, no clouds, no problem. Honestly, for the rest of this trip, I don't know if we're going to do any more shooting because we're also tired from last night and we got such good conditions last night. We're not really motivated to go do anything else, so this might be it. And yeah, this sunset was our last official quote-unquote shoot from this trip. The weather looked promising for Milky Way again, but Darwin's allergies kicked in and everyone was feeling a general sense of fatigue. We opted to sleep in again and gallivant around Hilo the following day. We even ran into some many geese at the park and we figured we should at least try to be photographers one last time before the trip was over.
When it was all said and done, we didn't end up really shooting all that much. Maybe two to three good photography sessions from this three-day weekend, which I consider to be rather unproductive. Hence, this trip might have been the worst group photography trip we've had so far. But despite our missed opportunities, the few shots that we did have, we took full advantage of, capturing magical moments in the process. I'm used to taking these trips fairly seriously, going full pedal to the metal most of the time, but this was a nice reminder that sometimes photography should focus more on the quality of our images rather than the quantity. Even though we were relatively lazy on this trip, we still had a blast traveling as a group, cracking jokes, eating good food, and capturing a few images here and there. The entire time we couldn't help but hyping up our upcoming mainland trip in the spring, where we would run it back for another Utah road trip. So stay tuned for those vlogs coming in a few months, but until then, hopefully I can fill the schedule with photography adventures here on Oahu, or maybe I should go on another trip. Thank you guys so much for watching this travel video. If you've enjoyed tagging along on this adventure, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the rest of my travel videos. I just realized that this YouTube channel just passed 1,000 subscribers, so thank you each and every one of you for tuning in to watch these silly videos. Your support is truly appreciated. I can't wait to make more videos for you folks in the future. Catch you all next week for another photography video. Peace out, guys.